Hello everyone, welcome to Integrated Math 2. We're going to be talking about parallelograms. Please make sure your information is in the top left hand right hand corner and let us begin. So, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. What does this mean? Okay, well, we know that BC is parallel to AD, but this is stating, hey, they're also congruent. And we know that AB is parallel to CD, but this is stating they are also congruent. So not only are they parallel, they are also congruent. They have the same value in length. Let's go on. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the opposite angles are congruent. Well, that's saying, hey, look, that's saying, hey, this C is going to be congruent to A. So I kind of like to take this from the transversal and two parallel lines. And I like to say, hey, we have a bunch of parallel lines. So I know that this would be an alternate interior angle to this one right here. And then if this is, alt this, this is congruent to this, then this is a corresponding angle to this one. So therefore, angle C right here, right here, is congruent to angle A. Well, that's a lot of, that's the transversal with two parallel lines using that to explain this. So if you just want to know, hey, look, opposite angles are congruent. That's breaking it down to the bare minimum right there. But if you wanted to use the uh, transver when a transversal cuts through two parallel lines and start talking about vertical angles and alternate interior angles and corresponding angles, power to you. If not, just remember this. Opposite angles on a parallelogram are congruent. Let's go on. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the consecutive angles are supplementary. So once again, if we had this and we had a transversal, we understand that, A, this would be corresponding top left right here. Top left would be corresponding to top left. And then this would make right here a linear pair. Boom. That makes 180 degrees. But the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D is equal to 180 degrees. It does not equal a linear pair. Why? Because they're not next to each other. We can only say that it's a linear pair, adding up to 180 degrees, when they are right next to each other. Otherwise, they're just supplementary. All right, guys. That's page one. Done. Let's go on. So let's, let's use the properties of parallelograms to solve this. Example one. Find CD. All right, well, you might just be like, hey, it's four feet because that's equal to that. But we can say AB is congruent to CD. How do we know that? All right, so we know that from um, um, opposite sides of a parallelogram. Oh, are congruent. Ah, I spelled that wrong, Mr. Schultz. Let's spell it right. Paralegal. Para. Give me a second. Oh, oh. There we go. All right. Next up. So we've said they're congruent. We did not say that they are equal yet. A, B is equal to CD. How do we know this? Well, this is called the definition of congruence. Now that we've proved that they are equal, because that's the definition of congruence, it's like one of those, like, duh, program, or bro, come on, man, let's go on. Next up. Now, I know for a fact that CD will equal four feet now. Hey, what's that called when you can switch it out? And you're like, all right, I know that is. I know what that is. I'm going to switch it out. It starts with an S. You hope I take more of these sometimes. In fact, when tennis season comes around, I'll probably be 
asking for some what type of teachers? Substitution. All right. Let's go into example two. So proofs using properties of parallelograms. So I love proofs. Two column proofs are cool. I like a flow chart too, but I'm like, let's not talk about that right now. So copy and complete the two column proof. So we're given this information. All right, so parallelogram, JKLM, that's parallelogram. KN is congruent to KL. All right, how do we know? Because it's the given information. They gave it to us. Next up, if a quadrilateral is parallel, then the opposite angles are congruent. Well, since I'm talking about this triangle right here, I'd probably say angle L is congruent to angle J. Angle L congruent to angle J because the opposite angles are congruent. Now, I'd probably say K and L. Angle K and L. Why am I saying this? Because it's talking about isosceles triangle theorem. They're saying this side is congruent, or this angle is congruent to angle L because that's the isosceles triangle theorem. Now, if we have three things that are equal to each other, we're like, hey, one equals two, and two equals three, then we can say that one is equal to three. So angle J is congruent to angle K and L. Why? This is called the transitive, ooh, I hit my mic. Transitive property. Now let's just wait a second. Now, it's not the transitive property of equality because there's no equal sign right here. You might be like, but Mr. Schultz, there's an equal sign right there. It's not an equal sign. It's a congruent sign. So we're going to say the transitive property of congruence. Now, this is good. if we had inequalities, you know, inequalities, then it'd be the transitive property of inequality. But it's not. So let's go on. Let's go on to page base. three, trois. Learn the diagonals of a parallelogram. What are we talking about? So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then the diagonals are going to bisect each other. So let's call this mm, M. So we know that if it bisects it, BM is going to equal MD. And we know that AM will equal MC. Well, it's not going to be equal. It's going to be what? Congruent. Because they're not equal to each other. They are congruent with each other. They have the same value, but they're not the same. Let's go on. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then each diagonal separates the par parallelogram into congruent triangles. All right, so this one, triangle ABD, ABD would be congruent to, so let's write this down. Triangle ABD, now we're starting here, going up the double, going the middle, and then the single. So we're going to start it, it's congruent to triangle, start at the C, C, go up the double, D, B. There you go. Well, that's one. Well, what if we did it the other way? We could say triangle A, B, C is congruent to A to B to C. We'd probably say C C, D, D, A. C, triangle, C, D, A. Now, it's, it's important that we make sure, hey, this matches up to this. Like, A matches up to C right here, and so on. All right, let's go on. Corresponding parts and stuff. All right, guys, that's it. This was a short one. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys in class. Bye, everybody.